Some events in Scottish history acquire a mythical status. I'm at Macbeth's hillock near Forest, where local folklore has it that Macbeth met the three witches. If you want to know the truth about Macbeth, this is a video for you. Hiya, I'm Bruce Fumi. If you're interested in the people, places and events in Scottish history, then at the bottom left hand side there's a button that you can click to subscribe at any time during this video. In the meantime, let me tell you a story. It's the 15th of August. Now, I don't know much about witches, but if I told you that Macbeth's reign started and ended on the same calendar date, would that seem spookily symmetrical? Today I'm in Murray. But on the 15th of August 1040, Murray was a semi-autonomous kingdom within Scotland. Its king, Macbeth, also had a claim to the Scottish throne. I'll tell you about it on the way. We live in a world where the first in line to the throne is Prince Charles. Then after him, it's his son, Prince William, and then his children, and then each royal has a numbered position in line to the throne. It's called primogeniture. It's a bit like getting one of those tickets out of the machine when you're waiting your turn in the job centre. You are six in the queue. Your call is important to us and we know that you're waiting and waiting and waiting. But she's never going to die. It wasn't like that in 11th century Scotland. The king was selected from the wider royal family based on age, experience, leadership skills and abilities in battle. Uh, essentially, he was elected by the nobility and the priesthood. It was a system called the Law of Tanistry, and it was much more like an intense group interview. We've now come to Burg Head. Now, this was a port and a naval base right back to Pictish times. And on the edge of the promontory here, uh, there's an old Pictish fort. And here in Burg Head, on the 15th of August, 1040, there was a battle. Macbeth was part of that wider royal family. Now he'd been left at sea in the last round of promotions, but today, destiny came crashing on the Murray shoreline. Now, there are three key characters in today's events. Torrin, Jarl of Orkney, and the big bad Viking controlled Caithness in the very north of Scotland. Duncan I was the King of Scots from the House of Dunkel down in Athol. And of course, Macbeth. Now Macbeth was the King here in Murray. Now these three were all loosely connected by family and birth. And by Celtic tradition, all had some kind of claim to the throne. Whatever Shakespeare tells you, King Duncan was neither old, nor wise, nor good. He was young, impetuous and warlike. He became king in 1034, but in the last year, he's attacked the north of England and it ended in failure, death and disaster. He had sent his nephew north by land with forces to Kithness to attack the powerful Orkney Jarl Torrin. That ended in defeat, death and disaster. Yesterday, he attacked Torrin at sea to add naval defeat and disaster to his CV. Now, Duncan was coming for Macbeth and Torrin was chasing him. Now, I've read various books and stories about the events of this day and I'll leave links in the description below if you want to buy one of those books. If you've followed me before, you know that I'm a fan of Fiona Watson. She's done a very good book about Macbeth. But then again, I digress. Back to the story. As Macbeth looked out from Burghead on the Murray coastline, he saw several ships approaching. Some containing Duncan and his men, fresh from the sea battle lost to Torrin. And behind them, Torrin, the Orkney Jarl, was in hot pursuit. Which side would you choose? Macbeth may have made his choice long ago. We don't know the fine detail of the ensuing battle, but when Duncan landed, he soon found out that given the options of a mediocre Scottish king and a proper mental Viking Jarl, Macbeth made the obvious choice. A battle at Burghead led to a rout, and Duncan and his men were pursued along the coast and round Loch Spiney. As holiday homes dot the Murray coastline now, you can hardly imagine how men of Athol fled for their lives desperate to escape the sword or battle axe that would fall on them from behind. 
desperate, but so far from home? Or would you have been one of the men of Murray, chasing your prey in rage at those who had come and invaded your land, knowing that if you don't kill them now, they'll be back? Spiny Palace hadn't yet been built for the Bishops of Elgin Cathedral at the time, but just south of Spiny Loch, Macbeth and Torrin caught up with the hapless Duncan. It was here, on the 15th of August, at Pitgavney that Duncan fell. Over the next 300 years, this death in battle would morph into a betrayal, then a murder, and finally Shakespeare would imagine good King Duncan murdered in his bed, and Macbeth, the gruesome, blood-soaked host above him. The truth is that Duncan was taken dead or dying from battle wounds to Elgin, and laid out for burial in what later became Elgin Cathedral. From here... Macbeth would have sailed down the east coast, then up the Tay to Schoon, to be acclaimed and inaugurated as the rightful King of Scots. This is the remnants of Elgin Cathedral. As Duncan's being laid out for burial, I highly recommend that you go and watch my video, Malcolm Canmore Scotland, and then come back and watch the second part of this video. Uh, I think YouTube remembers the point that you were at in this video. Uh, either way, trust me, the second half will make more sense this way. Besides, Macbeth's reign was one of calm, peace and prosperity. Nothing's going to happen for 14 years. You might as well watch another video. You just need to click the link on the white tab above. Uh, oh, and you can go to the comment section below and tell me what you think of Macbeth. Good guy, bad guy. You could also give the video a thumbs up while you're at it. That would be good. Go and watch the other video. Oh, I should say that from a Patreon members, I've uploaded an extra video of the stand-up show that I did at the Edinburgh Fringe 2017 called Macbeth Without the Shakespeare Bollocks. If you want to know how to become a Patreon member, then there will be links in the description below and at the end of the video. Are you still there? Or is that you come back? Okay, now for the other 15th of August. Okay, we started the first half of the video at Macbeth's Hillock in Murray, where legend says that Macbeth met the three witches. I've started the second part in Perthshire, where coffee and bacon rolls at the Three Witches Tea Room. Link in the description below. It's below Macbeth's Hill Fort at Dunsinan Hill. And that's where we're going for a walk next. If you watched the video about Malcolm Canmore, then you'll know that he and Seward of Northumbria attacked Macbeth here at the Battle of Dunsinan. They probably came up the Tay from the east, landed in its north bank and approached the hill fort from the south. It was a bloody battle, with large losses on both sides. The English won, but it wasn't definitive. Malcolm and his English army may have had the initiative, but they had too many dead and dying to take advantage of it. They retreated to lick their many wounds, and Macbeth remained as king. It wasn't his time to die. It wasn't yet the 15th of August. Three years later, Malcolm came north again with another English army. This time, he managed to pursue Macbeth north, here, to Lumfannon. We don't have details of the battle, but we know that Lumfannon here is where Macbeth died. Locals like to point to a stone on the other side of the field in front of us as to the place where their tradition holds that Macbeth was beheaded. We know that the Peel Ring of Lumfannon, where I am just now, was here when Edward I of England invaded in 1296. I like to think that it was here 200 years earlier and that Macbeth might have made his last stand here at the Peel Ring. What we do know is that exactly 17 years to the day after Macbeth had killed Duncan, on the 15th of August, 1057, Duncan's son reaped his revenge. Now, I don't know about you, but if I had to make the last stand for Celtic kingship, I think I'd like to make it here. Please like and share this video. If you want to become a member or help me make more videos, then click the link three ways to support me making videos to find out how. In the meantime, Hamian Doch is going to be a lama alive. Cheerio and Rasta.